He's written a lot of novels, uh, Halls of Power, stuff like that. He said, C.P. Snow said, the sleep of re reason brings forth monsters. Someone else probably said it first, but I've heard him say it. They all laughed at Christopher Columbus. Now, this isn't about Columbus, although I thought it was when I picked it up. An incurable dreamer builds the first civilian spaceship by Elizabeth Well. You probably know something about that. For a dollar I got that, in front of Strand. Now, I had been thinking, this next book here I have to say a couple words, I've been thinking about um, making my own telescope in my study of Newton and uh, the fact that optics was one of the most important parts of what he studied and did. Um, and I thought it might really, and Galileo and his invention of the telescope as we know it, you know, a quality device, not just a toy. I thought, wow, it would be neat to know enough to put together a telescope. One day, out in front of Strand for a dollar on the shelves, was Making Your Own Telescope by Alin J. Thompson for a damn dollar. And so I bought it, and I spent the afternoon reading it. Um, it shows uh, this nice telescope in the front here that stands probably four feet off the ground to the tip of it, whatever. It should probably be in the length, the base is, is whatever. Uh, it says for about thirty dollars this could be made. I assume let's call that two or three hundred today. Maybe maybe a hundred, I don't know. Um, let's see, published in originally forty seven and republished in seventy three. Okay, so maybe two or three hundred dollars today. Anyways, making your own telescope. So maybe someday I'll be Maybe we'll make one telescope each year in the classroom, the kids. Maybe that, I mean, that'd be fascinating, wouldn't it? All right, the Georgian Star. Uh, price stickers over there. How William and Caroline Herschel revolutionized our understanding of the cosmos. I have never heard of them. Copyright 2008. I have never heard of them. I've never heard of them. That's all I can say, and I thought I better get the book even though it's probably crap. It probably is crap. I don't know. I'm going to look into it. Uh, the Prism and the Pendulum. The Ten Most Beautiful Experiments in Science by Robert P. Kreese. Excellent book, with the exception of the fact that he throws in these interludes, which I think are chapters between chapters, but maybe it's the introduction to chapters. Yeah. They get, he gets the end of one chapter, and uh, before going on to the next chapter, he does an interlude, and it is terrible, terrible. Every time, it is a damn car wreck. But the chapters in between are fine. Go figure. The interludes, and the interludes, he stops being a straightforward historian who's reasonable, and he puts on his postmodernist uh, postmodernist hat and does weird things and tries to be poetic and. Uh, Amir D. Axel, Pendulum. Uh, this is a story about Leon Foucault and the triumph of science. Uh, because of the, the fact that you have to act on a body in order for it to change, because it has inertia, it won't just change where it's moving, you have to act on it. Because of the rotation of the Earth, if you have a pendulum swinging in one place, it's going to be messed with by the rotation of the Earth because the pendulum is going to want to swing this way but the Earth is moving and its angular momentum will be messed with and it will slowly, as it turns out, wobble around uh, a thing. You've probably seen these sort of sets up, setups but this guy was the first to do it. I've seen one in the planetarium in Salt Lake City. This is a fascinating book. Uh, it proves, with your, you can see with your eyeballs that the world is moving uh, brilliant experiment. The Blind Watchmaker by Richard Dawkins. Can't be without this. Published in the 70s, I think. He's more well known, oh, published in 87. He's more well known for um, The Selfish Gene, which is not nearly as good as this. And for The God Delusion, which is not this about the same stuff. It probably does go over evolution quite a bit in there, but this is 
specifically about how bad, how badly designed things are. This is, uh, evolution mishmashes things together, and that's what we find. And if it was designed, you wouldn't have these things that are completely insane. Only evolution can make make such insane things. All right, for the last six books here, this is actually a pile. I'm working on uh, some videos, taking much longer than I expected, for the the concepts of force, mass, and energy. Three videos, hopefully, eventually we put up maybe more. We'll see what comes of it. Um, and all of the next six books are the ones that I'm planning on using so far. Oh, the next five, the last one's not applicable, that's right. So, uh, Greek Science in Antiquity by Marshall Claggett. I've gone through this almost from beginning to end, even though I'd read most of it before, in search of the concept of energy in the ancient, uh, ancient uh, science. And I can't find a reference to energy. Um, I don't, I think, on closest uh, inspection, it will be Galileo or Newton that first uses it in a, an objectively definable way rather than a mishy mashy way. The Scientific Revolution, 1500 to 1800, The Formation of Modern Scientific Attitude by A. R. Hall. A History of Science by Dampier, uh, by William Dampier, I believe. Is that what it was? Sir William Cecil Dampier, published 1949. Good book, that. Right up to the part where he gets so mathematical I can't follow along. The History of Science in Western Civilization. Volume 1, Antiquity in the Middle Ages. Volume 2 is the Renaissance. Volume 3 is, is like the 1800s. This is excellent stuff. It's actually, looks like it was written up on a typewriter, but um, uh, I've got a couple copies of a couple of these books. Most of them are in Utah. I've got all three of the series. I paid like 15 or 18 bucks a piece for them online years ago because I just had to have it to know the history of science, and it's good stuff. The Origins of Modern Science by Herbert Butterfield. A dollar, strand, good stuff, that. Uh, 1957, so The Origins of Modern Science from 1957 should be a good text. And then this last one, Readings in the History of Ideas, Humanities, the Ancient World. I should have known it wouldn't contain anything with energy, mass, or force. Uh, but I looked through it, curse precursor rule. Now uh, this, this was a good find at a used book sale, or a library sale, actually. The library in St. George, Utah was having a big sale when we lived there. This was, you couldn't, there was nothing on the spine. And it was on the shelf, and I thought, I'll pull it out and see what it is. Come on, history, readings in the ancient world? Come on, you got uh, Herodotus, Aristotle, the pre-Socratic philosophers including Thales, Heraclitus, Xenophon, Hermonides, Zeno, Pythagoras, Democritus, Protagoras, come on, Thucydides, Xenophon, uh, the later Xenophon, Aristotle, Lucretius, uh, Stoicism by Zeno, and Cleanthes or Cleanthes, uh, Cicero, did I say him? Epictetus, don't, Epictetus is terrible. Marcus Aurelius, not too good either. Virgil, come on, nobody had got it. I think it was like a dollar. It was like a dollar for these and 50 cents for a smaller one. So maybe it was one dollar and two dollars. So I'm going to pay two bucks for it. Anyways, if someone would have got it, they would have known what it was. And I took a black marker then and put ancient writings on there. Well, that's the science section. Uh, let me know if I'm lacking any books that you find indispensable in science. Uh, I found some of these indispensable, including Wolfram's new kind of science. Get it if you don't have it.